It is, of course, day three and that morning, but we have to, of course, review day two with our darling Mel Farrell. On the show today, is Steve Smith the GOAT in tests? It is not the greatest of all time. He will certainly, I think, go down as one of the all-time greats. Does Mel pick Sachin over Smith in tests? Whatever will come my way if I didn't say Sachin. But <laughs> Steve Smith. No, kidding, kidding. And we managed to stump her, let alone quarrel with Farrell. <laughs> Well, 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 what do we have? Because look, I know day three is going to precede us and it's a moving day, but day two moved all right because Australia find themselves tightening the noose on India, if you want to put it that way, in this World Test Championship final. My name is Avnish Hegde, and as you can see, Mel Farrell with, of course, a little bit more sunshine uh, yeah. to today's show. Mel, how do you feel about proceedings moving on so quickly and Australia having a big advantage? 318, they still trail by India. They have to say that Australia have had two days of dominance. Yeah, they have. Today Today was another one. I, I mean, you know, I thought that when Steve, when Steve Smith got two sort of half volleys that allowed him to go straight up and that allowed him to get his 100, uh, I thought, oh, not, not a great start. And then when the wickets did eventually come, Travis Head, I mean, what did we say yesterday about bowling short? That's the only time when Travis Head looked to be uncomfortable throughout his whole innings. And when they tried it again, they ended up getting the wicket. So it kind of felt sometimes like there were these missed opportunities by India's bowling attack. Uh, And Australia then came in and I think showed almost a perfect blueprint of how to bowl on this uh, pitch here. There's still a bit in it. If there's still some variable bounce, there's still some seam, and they just hit, uh, perhaps bowled uh, a little, a little bit, uh, perhaps fuller than than India did. I thought um, just maybe enough to to get the seam working in their favour. And, and look, it just all worked perfectly. They shared the wickets. Uh, some big moments there. Some unplayable deliveries, probably particularly that one to uh, Virat Kohli from Mitchell Stark. I mean, that that ball's just going to have your name on it, isn't it? So just chipping away, it's it's been a pretty good all-round team performance, I think. Uh, And India's, you know, they've got, I think their back's pretty much to the wall now and they're in a a huge fight uh, in this test match. Yeah, I mean, it's really gut-wrenching, especially the dismissal that you just uh, mentioned there, Virat Kohli, getting an absolute snorter. People back home were... Again, kind of criticizing his back for play. And I was like, wait a second, name another batter who would have probably managed to bail himself out of that. So look, we'll leave that there. But let's move on to the first segment in Quarrel Farrell today. And it's called How's that? Let's ask Mel one simple question. Simple, if you guys want to judge it that way, is Steve Smith. The G O A T in test, the greatest of all time. Mel, what's your say? Oh, look, I think it's always hard to compare across eras when you talk about, you know, uncovered pitches and pitches, the I guess the amount of strength and conditioning and, and the professionalism of the game today. So I guess it's always really hard to say. Most people still, for some very good reasons, will consider Don Bradman the best of all time. Uh, I think Steve Smith certainly has, has laid a case for, for being next on the list when it comes to batting uh, after Sir Donald Bradman. I certainly got the average there and his, his record over here in England is, is now absolutely crazy. And where he is, but keeping in mind that he spent so much time out of the game uh, after Sam Papergate, of course, when he had to give up the captaincy and, and he, was, he was banned. Uh, and I think it was you know, over here in England in 2019 that he actually came back from that ban. And none of us really knew if he was going to be the same player that he was beforehand. Because how often do you see that players that would be great for injury, for example, and they come back and they're not the same. So I think the fact that he's been able to perform so well since coming back from that, it's an incredible, I guess, third story arc to to the tale of, of Steve Smith the before and then during that that time the the redemption to come back and do what he's done so 
if he's not the greatest of all time, he will certainly, I think, go down as one of the all-time greats. Yeah, that's a perfect summation of a man who's been through the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, like you mentioned there. But he's certainly one of the best. And he's got the King's stamp of approval, if you guys saw that bite from the ICC. So what I'll do to extend this little session of How's That with Mel, I'll play a little fun exercise, which has been doing the rounds on social media, where I literally compare Smith to a certain batter in test cricket. And you tell me who wins between them till we get a winner out of you, right? Let's go. So Steve Smith or Brian Lara, the better test batter. Oh, wow, that is one of those hard ones across eras, isn't it? Um, I kind of want to say Brian Lara because he's actually much nicer to watch. And I mean that with all due respect to Steve Smith, but you know what I mean, right? But look, I'll let, I'll, let's give it to Steve Smith. Okay, Steve Smith or Raul Dravid, the better test batter. <laughs> That's really hard as well, isn't it? Uh, the wall versus the fidgeter. Um, I'm going to give it to Steve Smith. Oh my God, Raul Dravid's played more test balls than any batter. Come on, he's surely the best batter ever. Yeah, you know, you're just saying he's, he's faced the most balls. That doesn't <laughs> say he's the best batter, does it? The, that's See, that, that's that, the best ball. That's my battle of bias kicking in over there because <laughs> I, I don't stay too far from Raul Dravid's house here in beautiful Bangalore. Last one, <laughs> Steve Smith or Sachin Tindoka, the better test batter. Oh, God. What are you trying to do to me? Okay, I, I better say Sachin. Hey, I, I like I can't, I can't take, I can't take whatever will come my way if I didn't say Sachin. But Steve Smith, <laughs> no kidding. <I'm> kidding. <laughs> Okay, we love that. Let's move on to the next section, which is named after Mel, of course, and it is Mel's Pick of the Day. I, I want to pick a composite human being that, say, has Mitchell Stark's head, head Pat Cummins' arms, uh, Nathan Lyon's torso, Cameron Green, Green's legs, and uh, Scott Boland's ears all bowled together. I thought that was just an all-round brilliant performance by Australia's bowling attack. And it was quite, I, I think it was, it was quite nice that they shared the wickets in the way they did. But I'm actually going to give it to Scott Boland. You know, I was picking him up, uh, saying how well I thought he was going to bowl. And that delivery is just, just why, well, it's why you don't, you don't shoulder arms to Scott Boland. And then to see it happen again with a Cameron Green ball that was actually really similar even though they're quite different bowlers uh i don't know it, it, it was pretty interesting to watch so, so i'm going to give it to Boland, but i think it's the first of a great many wickets that he's going to take this summer absolutely and uh look at the end of the day when i was just observing how scott Boland was so tight and immaculate with those lines lens it's it's those phrases, those commentators, and I'm sure you've used them before, the chord of uncertainty, the avenue of apprehension, you can go on and go on, but he defines that and it's a good shot in terms of Mel's pick of the day. On to the fun segments, before we move on to the Who Am I quiz where you guys can win merchandise, let's of course ask Mel. The dressing room stories, we've played this of course with others, of, on cricket.com before, where we ask a tale to tell about a match they've been part of in Walden, on the field or off the field in Mel's case. Mel, what do you have for us in DRS today? Well, see, I don't go into dressing rooms, obviously. Um, that you could. Be weird. You could. Uh, that would be weird. So I tend <laughs> not to go into dressing rooms. Uh, so but our dressing room is obviously either the press box or... Um, or it might be where they have the press conferences or the various yeah. media rooms. Um, look, probably, I'm saying this at my own expense because this is probably my most embarrassing moment in a press box, and I've had quite a few. Uh, but during the T20 World Cup last year in Australia, it was at the Gabba for Australia versus Ireland. And uh, we went to the post-match, Josh Hazelwood came in, not to do the press conference, but what they call a mix zone, which is basically, we all huddle around him, we hold out our phones and we record. Um, and I walked up in front of him, I was the first one as he walked in, and I planted my feet sort of about that far apart. Um, I was wearing flip-flops and I didn't really realize how slippery the carpet was at the Gabba. So as I planted my feet, they basically kept going and they kept going and I couldn't stop. And I was sinking down like this, 
basically doing the full splits as Josh Hazelwood just watched. And in the end, I realized I'm not that flexible and I was gonna do myself a groin injury. <laughs> and the only way I could get out of it was to basically throw myself forward into a face plant at Josh's feet. At which point, because everyone had just been watching me, no one knew what I was doing. They thought I was doing some sort of yoga inspired greeting. And then everyone jumped into action and he looked down at me and just said, Mel, what's going on here? And we've had a few laughs about it since. Everyone else was like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It was so embarrassing. I basically did the splits and a face plant um, uh, in front of Josh, Josh Hazelwood, right at his feet. Yeah. I don't think we can term this as an occupational hazard, but sometimes you never know with the pressers and all these journalists over there. But we love that tale there. Mel, I mean, it's it's really one that we'll definitely do our best to put it out there. Right, time to finish proceedings in Quarrel with Fal, which has been thoroughly entertaining so far. Uh, it's time for the Who Am I quiz, and let's get on with it. Who am I? Right, so of course, this time we made the picture slightly larger for Mel's benefit. And we'll give <laughs> I'm the still not going to get them, I don't know why. You might you might not, but there's an Aussie. We have an Aussie in terms of a player today that you guys can guess. I'll put up the rules for starters so you guys can take a look at it. Uh, all players in this quiz are India and Australia Test players. Winners only win if they get all three answers right. And all answers should be in the comments below. And obviously, whoever wins uh, this particular competition, DM us on Twitter and we'll get in touch with you to win your merchandise. So let's get on with it. Right, so I'm going to shout out the clues for player one. Who is this man? I mean, he's blonde. That's your first clue, Mel. He's blonde. Yeah. Okay. Your second uh -huh. clue is that he represented Durham in 2005. It's a bit of, of a vague clue. It's a left field shout. Sorry. But he represented Durham. And your third clue is his best test score is 10 not out against India. It came at the Melbourne test in 2003, 2004. 2003, 2004. God. <laughs> well, I know it's a bowler, obviously. Yeah. You don't understand. This is why I have stats guru. This is why I have people out there in Twitter land. This is the only opportunity we have a chance to stump Mel on her show. So look, she's not got the first one. Let's see if she can get the second one. I'll wow. give her the clues again. Now, this guy, he broke his finger at the age of nine. Okay. He also, I have another clue here. He has played what? 25 tests for India. And he played a T20 match in 2005. One, one of the only Indian players to play a T20 match in 2005. Yeah, no. Nothing. I got nothing for you. Nothing. She's going to pass that. She's going to pass that. It's fine. It's all right. It makes it better for the viewers to have a chance at the merchandise. So it's cool. We'll probably reveal the answers of day one after. And we'll tell you the winners of that as well. Um, the final and third clue, we'll just get on with it. This man, I don't know if the celebration gives it away. Uh, he has the jersey number of 99. He made his test debut against Australia in Mohali. And he was also part of the ICC Champions Trophy squad uh, in 2013. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I didn't see that Champions Trophy. trophy. Again, that's, that's, before, that's before my time. It's, it's all right. I think I kind of wanted to wet the test in terms of how strong the quiz was. I shared it with my colleagues and they were like instantly getting it. But look, wow. you know, lots to do. <laughs> wow, that's sledging. Sled this, is, this is basically like Siraj throwing the ball at Smith. Yeah, I told said. you. I told huh? you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And look, to put it out there, I wasn't going to bring up my salty Indian fan. I know we're 151 against for five against the ropes. But we've just all played with our best players, so we're feeling our B team and still hanging in there. So all you Australian fans, including Mel, can can do what? <laughs> I'm just I'm just being generous, you see. I'm I'm playing dumb so that people at home have a better chance. That is beautiful. Love it. Look, uh, let us know about your answers in the comments below, the viewers. Mel hasn't got it, but that's all right. 
there's more to win. Before we proceed with who am I today, let's of course announce the winners of day one of this prestigious quiz show, which is just one day in. Uh, the winner is of course Lego Mguni 7176. Well done, lad or lady, whoever you are. The answers were Damien Martin, Shiv Sundar Das, and Tina Trajan was the third one. So well done to all the people who've got it. We'll end proceedings with what's going to happen on day three. A quick prediction because look, I fancy India getting bowled out for 230. Australia not to enforce the follow on. And then whatever happens from there, que sera, que sera. <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's got I, it's got junk time third innings Australian runs written all over it, is, is what I would say. Uh, I think Australia, it, it's, it's going to be tough for India because you can just see Australia won't agree. They won't enforce the follow on. There is some rain around, but I don't think that they'll get... Oh, there's rain, some rain forecast for later, but I don't think it's enough to have any major impact on this. It's got Dave Warner coming out and smashing it all over the place and, and Manus getting 80 off 60 or something ridiculous like that in the third innings written all over it at this point. But we'll see. Um, I never like to get too hasty because Test Cricket has a way of making mugs of us all when we try and make predictions. But imagine this, right? Can it be Kolkata Deja Vu? It was 4.45 Australia got in the first innings and India were bowled out for a paltry 171. They've managed to get 6.57.7 thanks to certain Rahul Dravid and VVS Lakshman. And then the rest was history. So hopefully it's Deja Vu, Mel, because I'll tell you what, I'll be chuffed to bits if that happens. But look, thank you so much, Mel. Subscribe if you guys want more content like this. Subscribe if you guys want to see Mel cry at the end of the test. We'll have it for you. The only reason I'll be crying is if it goes too late on the last day and, you know, I have too much work to do. Oh, you're lying. But we love it. We love it. Absolutely brilliant from you. Thank you so much for your time. We'll leave it there and watch plenty of other content on cricket.com. We're doing some fantastic work with uh, Mel signing off from the Oval with lots of people trotting around. And we apologise for the hooliganism. We thought it only existed in football. But, well, the gentleman's cricket game too has that to say. We'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Goodbye from me.